In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, have the pleasure to sit down and chat with Troy Walters, wide receiver coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. Troy Walters was a hell of a football player, won the Blitnikoff Award as a wide receiver, consensus first team All-American at Stanford. Wide receiver, punt returner. Now he's coaching in the National Football League. And amongst players, when you have a, a coach that played at the level that he played at and generated the success that he did, you get instantaneous credibility. Players are going to say, this guy can help me. This guy had a very good career. He maximi maximized his potential. He can help me do the same thing with my potential. Players are listening to what Troy Walters has to say. And uh, the synergy between Coach Walters and the wide receiver group is apparent. They are having a tremendous season, both individually and collectively, as a wide receiver group. I think you're going to like everything there is to know and like about wide receiver coach Troy Walters. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we are in our beautiful First Star Logistics studios and a distinct pleasure right now to welcome the Bengals wide receiver coach extraordinaire, Mr. Troy Walters, who, hell of a receiver himself, while at Stanford, won the Bolitnikoff Award. Come on, coach. Consensus All-American. That's a heck of a, heck of a deal. Uh, consensus first team all American, obviously, if you win the Blitnikoff Award. So, instantaneous credibility, I would think, when you get up in front of your wide receivers and they're going to listen to what Troy Walters has to say based on the fact that he was a hell of a player as well as a hell of a football coach. Yeah, I've been, um, you know, blessed to, to be able to play the position, play at a high level. Um, but I think more important, I played around some great players. Um, you know, the Randy Mosses, the Chris Carters, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Waynes. So I learned a lot from those guys, how to be a pro, how to be not only a pro, but how to be an elite pro. Um, and that's what I try to share with the guys. And they understand that. And, and uh, you know, we have a great group of guys that want to learn. They want to absorb as much information as they can because they want to be great. So um, it's a great mix. And, you know, I'm just blessed that I was able to have a good career as a player. And now I'm fortunate enough to be here in the Bengals organization and, and around some good football players. Eight years in the National Football League as a player, and I uh, coached, you know, at various stops along the way, uh, been an offensive coordinator yourself, tons of experience. It seems like the one thing that I hear over and over again from your players is the brotherhood that you've developed. Uh, your, your wide receiver room, seems like a good place to be. I mean, I mean, the guys really care for each other, don't they? They do. They do. That was the first thing we tried to establish uh, was just the brotherhood, um, camaraderie, chemistry. Um, you know, one guy suffers. We all suffer. When one guy's successful, we're all successful. Um, and that's our motto. And, and uh, those guys have done a great job of buying in. And, and they truly like each other. And they like hanging out on the field, off the field. And, and that's important. Uh, because things sometimes are not going to go your way all the time. You're going to have adversity. And uh, we got guys that when we faced adversity, you know, they didn't blink. They didn't t point, start pointing fingers. Uh, you know, there are games this year where uh, TB didn't have many many targets or many catches, and he didn't care as long as we won the game. And, and same as for Jamar and T. And so those guys are happy for the success of others, of the other guys. And and, um, you know, we got a, we got a great culture and we got to just keep it rolling. You know, there's there's the adversity after a, a tough loss as a football team. And then there's adversity as an individual player uh, that you that you have to deal with. And they're both extremely important to be able to handle and, and deal with. And I think that, um, you know, Jamar Chase going through what he went through in the preseason with with the drops. How did you handle that, coach? How did you get Jamar Chase to just compartmentalize and move on the way that you did? Well, one of the things I learned from my playing days with Tony Dungy was he was consistent. And so as a coach, I need to model that. I, I can't be a guy that's up and down and, 
and after a loss, I'm one way. After a win, I'm another way. And, you know, the guys, I want to be consistent. And so, uh, you know, I tell the guys that our MO, our standard of operation, how we do things doesn't change um, after a win, after a loss, through good times, through bad times. We have a standard, and that standard doesn't change. And and so when, when Jamar was going through his difficulties this preseason, you know, um, you know, I called him out of office. You know, we talked, first of all, we talked about life that I want to make sure that everything was good off the field. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was dealing with some things off the field. And I told him that, you know, I want to be a guy that he can come to and, and, and open up and talk to, talk to me about things that are going on off the field and make sure that's, that's uh straight in his life. And I yeah. feel like if, if things off the field are, are together and are going well, then when you get on the field, you're free to play and, and, and be successful. And, and then, uh, you know, he, he understood, I showed him highlights of, of, himself in college at LSU making the difficult catches, uh, the dynamic playmaker that he was. And I told him, this is who you are. Right. You know, th- 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 these drops, that's that's not who you are. This is who you are. Um, you know, we went down, caught some tennis balls and, and just just got to work. You know, he didn't he didn't listen to the outside noise and the critics. And, you know, if he did, he didn't show it. And and he came to work every day and, and he, he worked himself out of that little little rut that he was in. You know, it seems like that word work is a big word. Um, the tennis balls, man, you, you and Jamar chase, you guys work at that, at that, uh, the, the drills, the exercises, whatever you do with the tennis balls, G- give us your philosophy behind that, uh, handling everything with tennis balls rather than footballs. What's the mindset? What's the idea? It's really about focus. It's more on the eyes, getting your eyes disciplined, getting your eyes um, right, focus. So it's it's catching a smaller object and really focusing your eyes on on catching it. And so and also reaction. So there are different drills where he might be standing facing a wall and I'm behind him and I throw the tennis ball off the wall. So he doesn't see it coming. He just sees it when it comes off the wall and he's got to, you know, it's, it's about reaction and eye discipline. And, right. you know, we change up the drills and we find find new drills and he may have a drop at practice and I'll figure out, you know, why it was the angle maybe, and we'll work on, work on that. So it's, it's being creative and just finding ways to improve, improve our craft. It, it seems like the wide receiver room as a group, not just the big three, but everybody in that wide receiver group has a tremendous work ethic. I mean, they almost like seem to push each other, you know, um, every, everybody's having success and nobody's, you know, saying, ah, oh, man, that, it's going so well. I'm going to back off a little bit here. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a little bit of a break, man. Everybody seems to be pushing each other really hard. That dynamic's hard to get, isn't it? It is. It is. But we've got, we've got a great group of guys. And, and early on, uh, we, we talked about in, in April, May, when they first uh, got back here, we talked about wanting to be the best unit in the NFL uh, from top down, not, not the best three. I want the best 10 guys or however many receivers we have. And, and everyone has a role. Everyone plays a role, and and they bought into that, and 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 understand in order to be great and be the best, consider the best. We got to work. We got to work hard. We got to work smart. Um, we got to be have, pay attention to detail, be disciplined, um, be accountable, dependable. Those are some of the words that I use. Like I want the quarterbacks to 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 trust the receivers. We're gonna know what to do. We're gonna be at the right place at the right time, and we're gonna catch the football. Or we're going to make the block. And I want the O line, Frank Pollock, and those O linemen to know that, you know, in the run game, we're going to be right there knowing our assignments and understanding what we need to do. And, and, and the running backs know that. So th- that's the type of unit that, uh, you know, I envisioned early on and, and the guys bought in and they've, they've uh, brought that to fruition. And, and, and uh, you know, every day we're on. Every day, you know, you, you can't take a day off. This is the NFL. I always tell them that once you get complacent, you're probably not going to be here much longer. And once you take things for granted, you're probably not going to be in the league for much longer. And those guys come to work every day with with something to prove and and not taking this opportunity for granted. That that's the thing that's remarkable to me is it seems like all your guys forget about games. Uh, they they've all made you know just about every snap uh, that that uh, is necessary during the course of the game. But even during the week of practice, I mean, no, everybody's there. Everybody's working hard. Everybody's taking every snap at practice. It seems like in, in always trying to get better. That's uh, that's something that's uh, hard to put a price tag on. It is, and it makes makes my life a lot easier, you know. Um, but and I also tell them that how you practice, how you're going to play, and so I want practice to be the be the hardest thing they they encounter. Um, 
I want them to, to pay the price on, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, so that on Saturday, so when Sunday comes, it's easy. And, and they've done that. And, and, and it's shown, you know, that uh, when you put the work in and, and, uh, and when you do well during the week, then, then Sunday's easy. Sunday's fun. And I learned a lot of that through when my time with Indianapolis and Peyton Manning and those receivers. I mean, the ball didn't hit the ground right. from Friday. The ball didn't hit the ground. That was the standard. And uh, and we've we've gotten to that place where now Fridays, I mean, the ball it rarely touches the ground, and 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 that's when you know as a coach that the guys are ready to go when when Friday is as clean as it, it's been. That's awesome. You mentioned blocking. I I really do believe. You know, as a former lineman, I, I appreciate what your what your group does at the wide receiver position. I really think, as a group, it's the best blocking wide receiver core in the National Football League, and it seems like guys take tremendous pride in that. Yeah, it's it's, it, we're, we're, it's about being unselfish, and we're an unselfish unit. Whatever it takes for us to do to help the team win, that's what we're willing to do. And um, I think it's helped the run game. Frank comes to me. And now he can run some different run run game uh, schemes with us involved in the blocking. And right. he said that's different from other places he's been because the other places he's been, the receivers, they wouldn't touch a soul or they wouldn't, you know, right. you couldn't include them in, in certain blocks or you couldn't include them or, or trust that they're going to block a linebacker. And, and we will. We'll, we'll block whoever they ask us to block. And and uh, the guys take pride in that. And you'll see them game day. If they make a big block, they're flexing, you know, flexing right. their muscles. And <laughs> and so, it, you know, just uh, we, we take the same approach as we do in, in in the past game. And if we can make a big block to spring Joe and the running backs, then that's what we're going to do. Well, you know, one, one thing for sure is if you're in the right place at the right time, uh, the quarterback's going to get you the football, right? And uh, you, you have that type of quarterback. And, and just – Jamar, 79 catches, 1,429 yards. Man, 13 touchdowns, averaging over 18 yards a catch. T. Higgins, 74 for 1,091, averaging 14.76 touchdowns. Tyler Boyd, 67 for 828, five touchdowns, averaging almost 12 and a half per. That's just the top three receivers on the football team, top three catchers of the football are all wide receivers. Other teams have three guys maybe with 70 or more catches, but it includes a running back or a tight end or whatever. You guys, your three wideouts, 74, or excuse me, um, 67 or more catches, 67, 74, 79. Is that what you envision when uh, you put this offense together? Yeah, I, you know, yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's an offense where we want to, you know, we want to spread the field. We want to, you know, um, we're not going to force it to one guy. You know, we feel like we have a lot of options. Uh, it really starts in the run game with Joe and, and the offense line up front, being able to run the ball. And, yep. and that creates more uh, space out on the perimeter for us. Uh, you know, Zach and Brian do a great job of, of implementing the game plan where everyone's involved. They understand what guys do best and they strategically try to put guys in, in position to make plays. And then you got a great quarterback. You got an elite quarterback who, um, understands coverages, understands the game so well. And so he's able to uh, make throws that uh, other quarterbacks can't make. And he makes our life a little easier. Um, and so, uh, you know, the more balanced we can be and spread the ball around, uh, the better. And those guys are all ready when their numbers call. You know, like I said, there were games where T didn't have as many catches as he would like. Yep. But maybe the next week he did and he was ready to make those plays. And same for Jamar and, and, and TB. And so, those guys have made the most of their opportunities. And uh, like I said, we got to just keep it going. Give me a thumbnail sketch of the big three, if you can, in terms of physical attributes that make them different, you know, separates them a little bit. Let's start with Jamar Chase. And in, in your in your eyes, Coach, what is it that makes Jamar Chase unique physically? Yeah, uh, she's, his strength, um, his explosiveness, and his body control. Hmm. You know, he, he, he's he got a body like a like a running back, thick lower body. He's tough right. to bring down. Um, he's strong. So at the at the catch point, you'll see defenders, you will nudge a defender and you'll see them kind of get them off balance. And he'll be able to have great body control at the catch point to make an acrobatic catch. Um, and then when the ball's in his hands, as he showed uh, last week against Kansas City, he's able to take a you know 10 yard route and take it 70. Yeah. Uh, 
T. Higgins, great length. Um, great. Uh, he's got good speed for his length, and he's just got great, great hands, you know, and he, and he really uses his body, uses his length to his advantage where he can stretch and, you know, go over a defender or, or reach out and use that length to, to make the play. Right. Um, and he's getting better and better. Good route runner. And then TB is, uh, you know, just understands the game, um, consistent, great hands, um, understands zone, man, knows how to get open in the slot. So it's a combination of all those makes us pretty dangerous. So, Coach, you've won the AFC North. Um, you're going to get a home game for playoffs. You understand, having played with Peyton Manning, <laughs> what it takes to be successful to compete at the next level in terms of playoff competition. How different are the playoffs and, and what will you be telling your players as you get them ready for playoff competition? You know, really, I'm, I'm not going to tell them a whole lot. I mean, we've, we've kind of been in playoff mode these last right. three or four weeks where right. we, 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 we understand that we needed to win. It's win or go home basically. And so, you know, I don't want them to put any more pressure on themselves um, do anything differently. I think the, the way we prepare uh, day in and day out is going to, is going to, it doesn't have to change. We do enough. Um, it, it comes down to still a 60 minute football game. Um, you know, it's, it's winner, winner, go home. And, and they, they're, they're used to it the last mm -hmm. three or four weeks. So we're not going to change a whole lot. Um, you know, we're going to continue to prepare, study the opponent, study their technique. And then when the when game time comes around, we got to be ready to, to make the play at any time and continue to do what we've been doing. The one thing that you've done by taking care of business against the Kansas City Chiefs, which is a hell of a football team, to beat them in Cincinnati and, and clinch the division, you've earned the right to almost, uh, you know, if you so desire, treat this like a bye week. You've earned that right or, or play players that uh, you want to play or however you want to handle this football game. How good a feeling is that? It's real good. Yeah, you never want to, you know, you never want to go into the last game knowing that you got to win to make the playoffs and, and and go on the road and do that. And, you know, that that's tough to do. So no, testament to the guys to really focus and and, and find a way to, to beat the Chiefs. And now, you know, we have options and, and we can uh, it's not a it's not a do or die game for us in terms of winning. Uh, we we got to do what's best to help us win a Super Bowl. And then that could be resting guys. That could be, you know, playing some other guys. Who knows? Zach and Brian and the, uh, those guys, they'll, they'll have a great plan for us. And the guys will buy in and, and we'll go to work uh, and get ready for Cleveland and, and then get ready for the playoffs. You know, the, the thing that has defined this football team all year long, and it started pretty early in the season, those explosive plays like you talk about, turning a 10-yard, 12-yard catch into a 70, 80-yard touchdown, uh, you know, Jamar has done it multiple times. Higgins, I mean, Tyler, everybody's done it. It's it's incredible. And um, that that keeps defensive coordinators up at night, doesn't it? It does. It does. And I know last year that was one of the things we were missing was the explosive plays. Didn't have as many as we liked. And that was a goal coming into this season um, was to be explosive uh, with the ball in our hands, run after the catch, as well as, you know, uh, making the contested 50-50 ball down the field. And uh, for the most part, we've done that. And, uh, you know, that can change a game in, in, in so many different ways. Uh, but we also are able to grind out a game if we need to. You know, that last drive against Kansas City, we went six minutes um, and, and used up the clock and, and made some big plays along the way. But uh, we can do it either way. We can create explosives, you know, one play, two plays, and they create a touchdown. Or we can go eight, nine. I think one drive we had uh, 14, 15 plays. And so, uh, to me, we're versatile, um, and we can get it done in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it, it's it, it's so amazing to me. It's 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 like you want to be balanced offensively, uh, you know. And there's different ways you can talk about balance, and then sometimes balance within the balance. Like we're talking about um, Joe Burrow distributing the ball equally to all quadrants of the field, and balance within balance of a of a passing attack, and then complemented by you know a running attack. Man, I mean, it's at some point in time, it's where do you begin? I mean, where's the starting point? What do you take away first? Uh, what what poison do you pick? It, it, it's uh, it's really it's really something else, isn't it? Yeah, we got a we got a great group of guys, uh, very talented. You know, starts up front with O line. They're doing a great job protecting Joe, and then 
you got to have a guy that can pull the trigger, and we do. We got a franchise quarterback who's able to see the field. Uh, we got a good stable of running backs. We got good receivers, and then the the tight ends. You know, they go. They they're yep. kind of the unsung heroes. You know, yep. the receivers get all the attention, but CJ. I mean, he's made some critical, crucial catches this year that have helped win football games. And so when they're they're always ready. When their numbers called, they're ready to step up and make a play, and and they do the dirty work in the run game as well. So. You know, we're, we're a balanced offense, and uh, like I said, we got to just keep getting better and uh, and hit the playoffs uh, in stride. You played with Peyton Manning. Um, Joe Burrow, like you said, sees the field so well. Is there a similarity? And I'm not saying that Joe Burrow is Peyton Manning or vice versa or whatever, but is there a similarity in terms of football intelligence, uh, being able to process information quickly, make the proper decision, you know, seeing the field, all those kind of things. Does Joe Burrow have a lot of those uh, qualities that made Peyton Manning so special? He does. He does. Um, and, and it starts with the intangible. It starts with uh, the, the the preparation. Um, you know, Peyton, he'd watch every game, and he would go back maybe even the year before and watch games. Wow. And he was so prepared that, I mean, he knew what was coming uh, before they did, you know, because um, he studied so much. And Joe's the same way. Joe understands what they're trying to do, what, where the blitz is coming from. He gets us in the right protection, gets us to the right play. Um, you can put the offense on Joe's shoulder, just like we did with Peyton, and he can he can carry it. He can he can call the he can call the game at the line of scrimmage if if need be. Um, and he understands the receivers. He understands where to where to throw the ball, the soft spot. Understands the zone. Um, but just his demeanor, he's never too high, never low, focused, practice matters. That's one thing with Peyton I learned, man. Practice was was just as important as the game. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a ex- example was uh, like in May we had our OTAs. And back then when I played, you could you could you could do one on ones. And so we would do one on ones, receivers, DBs. And this is in May. You know, the season starts in September and he was just as focused and wanted you to win in May as he did in September, October, November. And if he didn't win on the route, he's going to let you know. And he was always on and it, and it made everybody else around him um, on and, and you had to be prepared. You had to be ready or you weren't going to be there. And that's the culture we're developing here. And as a receiver, look, if, if, if you if Joe can't depend on you then you're probably not going to be around because, uh, you know, he's, he's running this offense. You know, it's it's that's an interesting point you make. A lot of people don't realize all the extra work, the behind the scenes reps that take place between a quarterback and his receivers to to be as effective and efficient and proficient as they are. And and that's everybody talks about the chemistry between Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, and that's due to a thousand reps, right, or multiple thousands of reps. I mean, they seem to. You know, be on the same page, and and Jamar Chase knows that Joe Burrow is going to put the ball in a certain spot, and Joe knows that Jamar knows Joe's going to do it, and and it always works out. I mean, they are just the mental telepathy that goes on between those two guys is something to see, isn't it? Yeah, and they've they've taken the reps in at LSU, the the num- numerous reps they took there, and then yep. here at uh, Cincinnati, and 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 Joe will keep Jamar after practice. If they missed a route in practice or, you know, there wasn't a connection there on a different page, they'll stay after practice and work on mm-hmm. on different routes. And on Fridays, Joe takes all the all the uh, TB and, and, and T and they'll put him through a couple routes that he wants to run to make sure that, uh, you know, they're all on the same page. And so there's chemistry between Joe and Jamar, but there's also chemistry between Joe and T and and TB as well. Just, uh, you know, th- those guys work and behind the scenes and and make sure that they're they're all on the same page. So when game time comes, um, you know they could they can make the play needed. TB's touchdown catch against the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, both Coach Callahan and Coach Taylor have been quick to point out that that, that that's you. You know you, you're big in the red zone is one of your areas of uh, contribution, one of many areas of contribution. But red zone, you you came up with a with a tweak and a format and a, and a uh, route change and, and, it, and it paid off big dividends and when when Tyler Boyd executed it properly what did that what was that feeling like hey man it, it, it I came up with something and look at that thing how it worked out is that a great feeling or what 
Yeah, it was. The, the best feeling was it put us up in the ball game and, yep. and uh, for the first time. And and, yep. um, and honestly, as I as I watched the tape uh, and I actually went into the Dan to pitch his office and and told him that that was a hell of a throw. Mm -hmm. um, the safety really undercut TB and, and Joe put it the only place he could have he could have thrown it. And uh, and I went in there, I said, of all the throws and he had a lot of impressive throws that might have been the most impressive in my opinion because there was a small window yep. uh, where he could throw that ball and he did and uh, uh and you know zach and brian they give us coaches on offense a lot of um uh, freedom and, and they listen you know and that's that's what i love about this staff it's not just one guy running the show it's we're all involved uh, we all contribute um there's no egos on the staff uh, there's no I'm taking the credit for everything. It's right. it, we're, we're a unit. It's a team. If we win, it's because we're all contributing. And, and, and Zach and Brian do a great job of including the assistant coaches. Coach, finally, and appreciate you carving all the time you did on a on a big day. I know it's a big game plan day and a big game coming up with the Cleveland Browns. You get out there in pregame warm-ups, and, man, you run the routes, and you're still looking good getting in out of those cuts, Coach, running good routes. And, and to do that, to be out there on the football field with your players, that that's kind of a special time, isn't it? And I'm sure those guys really enjoy when you're out there running routes with them, don't they? They do, you know. And and then one thing I made up in my mind, um, you know, coming into this uh, this season and and being a part of it, is I don't want to take anything for granted. And and I love being around our guys um, on the field, off the field, meeting rooms. And so you know, game day, you know, I said I want to put my cleats on and go out and put myself in their shoes and and have that focus and you know I don't want the ball to hit the ground and but just being out there with those guys running around um it's awesome because we got a great group and I don't want to take that for granted because you know from year to year things change and you just never know so anytime I can get out there with the guys and and, and be around them and, and then then I'm going to do that and and I still show them that I can still at, at 45 I can still you know I still got a little in the tank there and you so, go uh, and I kid with him last night. I kid with him that, uh, uh, you know, Darren Waller for the Raiders, he, uh, you know, he was on the practice squad and he was working out before the game. And I think Brian Callahan, when he was at uh, the Raiders, they saw him working out and they ended up signing him because of the workout. And so I tell the guys, you know, you never know who's <laughs> who's watching. There may be a scout or something that needs a needs a 45 year old returner or something. And and so they, they get a kick out of it. But try to stay young, try to stay in shape and show them that I can still uh, do a little bit. That's right. Not only a wide receiver, but a punt returner as well in your storied career. Coach, can't thank you enough. I mean, I know you got you got players with enormous potential, but the role of an outstanding coach is to maximize that potential. And man, nobody's doing it better than you are with this wide receiver core with the Cincinnati Bengals. Thank you for the, your time. Good luck against the Browns. And uh, good luck in the playoffs, sir. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know you got to get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.